I just want to say that I'm proud to be a constitutional conservative. I'm proud to be one of the few that is on, if the only that's on, the Puget Sound. And I'm proud to tell you that even in spite of the fact that the party has twice come very hard against me and tried to unseat constitutional principles, we won by eight points last time. We won again in the primary, and we're going to win again this November because, as Marty just showed, the state is ready for a change. They're ready to solidify strong leaders that will stand on principle and vote those principles every day while they're down in office. I'm proud to be that person for you. Thank you. To that end, uh, in addition to being a strong constitutional conservative, that's not scared to tell you that. I also believe that you demand more as voters, and I believe that we need to start showing effectiveness down in Olympia. The best way I know how to do that is to be accountable through measurable means. And so three years ago, I came, or two years ago, I came before you as a representative that was appointed that's in the minority party, and I made three big pledges that I was going to stand up for and deliver for you even though I was going to potentially be in the minority. The first pledge that I told you was I was going to fight for and be the first representative to stop the toll increases on the Tacoma Narrows Bridge. Well, despite the fact that I was in the minority, I can tell you today I'm very proud to tell you that we stopped the toll increases from happening and, and became the first representative to ever do that, and you're going to see even more happen because I'm going to fight for you every single day, and I'm not going to use an excuse that I'm in the minority. I think you demand more, and I'm here to serve you in that capacity. So I'm proud to tell you we stopped the Tacoma Hills Bridge Tolls from increasing. <laughs> Secondly, I told you that I would fight adamantly in not support a tax increase, but more importantly, demand a balanced budget and make sure that we delivered it without raising taxes. That's the second promise that I kept from you. You didn't see your taxes go up this year, and we balanced the budget despite the governor's claims that we could not do so. So that's the second promise that I delivered. The third promise was that the Republican Party said, you know what, we're finally getting to a position of posture where we can actually make some changes on education. And we told you that we were actually going to deliver results for education. Now, I appreciate that Larry had the courage to come here, but since the time that Larry got into office and the time that he was voted out of office, the cost of tuition more than doubled for college education. In my first full year there, we delivered a budget that not only was balanced without raising taxes, but we, cost, we cut the cost of tuitions for college kids so that we could start owning up to our pledge to actually make education affordable. Not only that, I also am the only Republican, if you didn't know, as a constitutional conservative, that has the WEA endorsement on the western side of the state. That's right, you heard it, the constitutional conservative has the WEA endorsement. You want to know why that is? Nobody could figure it out. In fact, all of the leadership of my party kept figuring, trying to figure that out. How the heck did you do that, Jess? It's because I kept my word. I kept my door open. I listened. And I fought for constitutional principles. You know what the number one issue for teachers is? No more top-down mandates. Well, go figure. That aligns right with the Tenth Amendment and constitutional principles. So when you stand for principle, you stand for integrity, and you work your butt off, you can get a lot of things done and move pounds. And I'm happy to be that representative for you. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah. So that's our first grouping of candidates, and we're going to take a little bit of an interlude because it's time that we're going to give out some uh, awards, if that's uh, convenient. So I think I need to get these awards from the... Sandy's always close by because everybody knows I need adult supervision. In order to uh, present these uh, awards, though, we have a very special guest here tonight, and I think you know who this is. But how many of you have visited the Liberty Bell on the East Coast? How many? Of you, raise your hands high. How many of you know that there's a real Liberty Bell right in your midst? Yeah. Would you welcome and give a good uh, applause to Miss Kelly Liberty Bell? And as uh, you know, arguably the founder of the actual Tea Party, at least wouldn't we like to say that? There's somebody who will disagree, but that's what people do. We're going to. Um,
She's going to help me give out these awards. So, the volunteers and board members, volunteer board members, of uh, youth, energy, commitment, dedication, um, intelligence, uh, diligence, faith. I just can't come up with enough words that this young man has given to the Tea Party for many years. He, uh, he's moving his car. He's moving his car. <laughs> so we have to go on and on and on. I didn't know he was gone. <laughs> <laughs> now what do we do? I'm usually pretty good at that living, but maybe we'll have to. What's that? Well, you are. Why don't you talk about the beginning of the tea party? <laughs> okay, so, one time there was this really liberal president and, uh, <laughs> Uh, no, I don't. I'm pretty sure everyone here probably knows, but just I guess as a as a refresher, um, we let's see. So the stimulus was happening, and um, we were all upset. We were all making phone calls, and then I remember just thinking, okay, I've seen everybody protest against the Iraq War and protest. I mean, just, you know, everything in Seattle, everybody protested everything during the Bush years, and I just thought, okay, those people can figure out how to organize a protest, like, I know I can, you know, <laughs> it cannot be that hard if a bunch of progressive college kids can figure it out. So, I called around, found out how to get a permit and all that stuff, because I had never done anything like that before, and we organized uh, the protest against the stimulus for February 16, 2009, and that was President's Day, and Obama was scheduled to sign the stimulus the following day on the 17th. So we held the protest, we had, um, it was 120 people show up, and it was organized very quickly, but in about, I don't know, three or four days really. Um, Kirby let me, I called in to Kirby's show as just a caller, and I was like, I'm gonna have a protest. <laughs> at Westlake Park. And so he let me call in the, the next day as well. I think that was a Thursday and then on Friday he let me call in as well and remind people about it for the following Monday. And I had emailed Michelle Malkin and she posted it on her website. And so, I mean, I was shocked that 120 people came out. And I'll never forget, people had their signs in garbage bags and stuff because they were parking in downtown Seattle and they were walking through the streets to Westlake Park and they didn't want anyone to see their sign because, I mean, I understand why, because everyone in Seattle is psycho and you don't want to get beat up or mugged or something just because you have a different point of view. So, but I just remember thinking that was really funny, or holding, holding their signs back up afterwards and slipping them in their bags. Um, so, yeah, we had 120 people, and it was awesome. And I can't remember if it was that one or the, the next one, but man, like, there was some guy that like, got on the little stage at Westlake Park and was trying to do, trying to call, call his name, and I don't even want to say the words, because if I say them, then it'll be, like, on YouTube later that I'm saying those words. So, um, anyways, it was just, I just remember people being, Seattle people being very aggressive that we were out there. Um, but it was so fun, and, and I also remember people coming up to me afterwards and saying, oh my gosh, I needed that, that was amazing, we need to do this again, when, like, when's the next round? What are we doing next? And it's like, I don't know. <laughs> um, but I remember reading that Obama's campaign had taken down the email addresses of everyone that went to any event at all, whether it was an event at somebody's house, or a public rally, or whatever it was, and that's how they built their incredible email list, at least partially. So I thought, well, all right, let's collect email addresses. So that was the beginning of our Tea Party email list, and uh, how we communicated, and got people out, um, and did action alerts, and all that stuff. Um, and then three days later, February 19th, was when Rick Santelli had his big rant um, that everybody remembers as sort of the start of the Tea Party. 
And then um, it was just after that that a bunch of people on Twitter started talking and said, okay, let's take this on to a phone call, a conference call. And there were about 20 of us on that phone call. And that's when we planned the first round of tea parties for the 27th of February in 2009. And then, as you know, the rest is history. And um, we've been working very hard ever since to right some wrongs. And I have to say, I'm so, like, it's, it's, it's very heartwarming to see that people are not giving up because it has been a rough eight years. Oh my gosh. Like, so rough. <laughs> and I think that it's really easy to, to give up, but the fact that there are still so many tea parties, acro groups across the country. Um, I started working for Tea Party Patriots, which is a national organization, uh, and I worked for them until like April 2015 when I quit so that I could uh, stay home with my older, older daughter. And um, <clears throat> she's right there, Rose. And uh, so, but through that, I got to meet so many people who, from all over the country, who are members of local tea party groups like this one. Uh, anyways, so, and Peggy knows a lot of those people too from around the country, and they're just, like, there's people are still doing stuff, and you don't hear about it because it's not a story that the media wants to talk about, just like they don't want to talk about what we've done, been able to do in Washington State. They don't want to talk about it because then that gives credence to the fact that we're still out there, we're still doing stuff, and they want everyone to think that we've given up and that we've gone home and that we're not working to change things anymore. Okay, so I guess we're gonna go to another candidate because that was enough of that. <laughs> so, okay. As soon as that young man, he's not all those good things I said, and he's law-abiding, he knows that. So he's moving his car. So uh, when he comes back, we'll, we'll start the awards again. In the meantime, we're gonna do another candidate, uh, our timekeeper. Mike, pop back up here. Uh, the only county commissioner that uh, is running tonight that is here and want, wanting to speak is, oh, that, was, that sounded bad, because we have two county commissioners here tonight. And I absolutely want to recognize my good friend from Mason County over here. Give Randy a, a, a warm uh, round of applause over here. He gave the pledge tonight. Yep. A great man and a great uh, uh, protector of individual liberty and property rights. But now, at the moment, we're going to listen to Chris Tibbs. Come on up. Give a hand to Chris. Well, thank you, Johnny. I want to be real clear right now, though. I am not running against Randy Netherland. <laughs> So, uh, Chris Tibbs! Well, Chris Tibbs, you know. Uh, so, my name's Chris Tibbs, running for Kitsap County Commissioner because we need to make a change in Kitsap County. For too long, our county has been divided. There's Democrats and Republicans and Independents and all that. But really, folks, county government is about what is right and what is wrong. It is right when the county represents you, the citizens of our community. It is wrong when we are expected to be subservient to the county, right? Yeah. This is the Tea Party, Where's the, I want a round of applause. Think about that, right? And great organizations like the Kitsap County Patriots Tea Party stand firm and solid at the county commission and say, you know what? You county commissioners, you work for me. You know what? The County Department of Community Development, it works for me. And I want to thank each and every one of you for standing up to our county and saying enough is enough is enough, you work for me. So give yourself a round of applause. So, so with my beautiful bride, Michelle Cotier, our great representative here in the 26th District, gets to serve with uh, Senator Jan Angel, Representative Young. 
We've doorbelled more than 11,000 homes in South Kitsap and Central Kitsap. Think about that, 11,000 homes. And we worked very hard to re-elect her and for my election. And I'm proud to tell you, you know, as of right now, she's at 56% in the primary, so I'm very proud of her. That's a round of applause, folks. And I was proud to receive 44% from the people of South Kitsap, which was the largest majority, largest margin of victory in 24 years. Think about that. So what am I going to do as your Kitsap County Conditioner? I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to listen to what your concerns are and what your issues are. We're going to go out and fix the roads in Kitsap County. We're not going to worry about how many chicken you own per acre. I don't know if you know this, in Kitsap County, our County Commissioner Charlotte Garrido, God bless her, bless her heart as a city from the South, bless her heart, has determined that you're allowed to own 12 chicken per acre. So why is that relevant? Why is that important? Well, think about this. They spent the county's time, resources, and energy, your taxpaying money, to tell you how many chicken you can own per acre. And the big question for the county, the question that kept them caught up for about 12 months as they were looking and evaluating and studying the issue, was how many chicken do you get? Well, at what point of acreage do we go to 1,000 chicken per acre? I'm not making this up. County spent almost a year to determine that at five acres, folks, you can have a thousand chicken. Now, think about that. We have a county government that needs to represent your interests. How many of you are concerned about the number of chicken per acre? Let me see hands. Okay, okay. How many of you are concerned about needless waste by the county government? Show of hands. How many of you are concerned that our county is out of touch with Kitsap County and the people of Kitsap County, right? Show of hands. How many of you feel that Kitsap County represents you? Right. We need to fix roads, we need good manufacturing jobs, and we need to move Kitsap County forward. You know, if you look at what's going on with the Rifle Revolver Club right now, that's wrong. We talked a little bit earlier about there's right and there's wrong, right? How many of you think that it's appropriate the way the county's conducted itself for the last 10 years of the Rap Revolver Club? No, not at all, not at all. How many of you are frustrated that the county has sat there and harmed an organization in Kitsap County, has denied us constitutional rights? How many of you are upset about that? Right? So we need a commissioner who's going to work with the Gun Rifle Club. We need a commissioner who's going to represent each and every one of you. We need a commissioner who's going to focus on getting jobs in Kitsap County and not figuring out how to spend $10.8 million of your money on a fast ferry from Bremerton to Seattle. we got to figure out how we can fix the commute from the shipyard to Port Orchard, from Port Orchard to the shipyard, not the commute from, Seattle, from West Seattle to Bremerton, right? So I am committed to being your county commissioner. I'm committed to representing each and every one of you. And we're going to move forward to make a whole stronger Kitsap County together. Thank you so much. Never give a politician a microphone that's wireless. You can't, you can't cut them down. Good, Chris. Thank you, Chris. Okay, uh, next on the legislative uh, list, uh, for the 23rd uh, representative position number one, Loretta Burns. Give her a warm up. Warm up. Yes, my name is Loretta Burns, and hopefully many of you have seen me before because we are in the 23rd legislative district, the only district where we have no Republican representation. And one of the reasons I decided to run many months ago was because I felt like our legislators that we have today are not listening to other points of view. And also because our government is just growing out of control and it is wasteful and we need less government. Now I have to say, I was pretty new to the political scene. I've been observing things and listening to people, listening to candidate forums over the last six, seven years. And um, then finally got to the point, well, somebody needs to run. Now, when I started, wanted to learn more about the Republican Party, to be quite honest, no offense to the, the Republican Party leaders, but I couldn't find them. 
And so I actually, and then we, could, we found out about the Tea Party, and it's like, well, let's go to the Tea Party event. At least they're meeting on a regular basis, and it was, and so that's, I mean,